Happy Friday. Um. Happy Friday, everyone. And welcome back into my craft room. I hope everybody had a great week. It's been pretty busy here. As you saw for this week, um, I was doing, hey, do Halloween projects. And this is the card that I had done during the week using the uh, poinsettia dies and did them in black with the uh, black glitter paper inside and out. So I figured for tonight, I was thinking about the flowers on the pumpkins, so I decided to do it in pumpkin pie and black because I really did like this designer series paper or pattern paper as they now call it in, on um, on the website I thought it was really pretty and then I used the brass foil sheets as the accent and then did the same thing on the inside but added a piece of the um, pattern paper on the inside where this was so stark up against the black paper um, I didn't like how it ended as you can you can see it here where the glitter ends but it's not as noticeable yeah the black one hi Peggy how are you so I decided to go with Halloween traditional Halloween colors and then I made this little trick-or-treat box that will hold a Whit Whitman sampler but before I get started um, thank you everybody who has joined my group this week and also thank you for sharing um, my video last week and actually Peggy you're here I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, but I will, if you'll PM me your address, you'll be getting this um, mouse pad, Stampin' Up mouse pad for your computer. So congratulations and thank you so much for sharing my video. And um, if when you get a chance, just PM me your address and I will get that in the mail to you. Okay, so let's get started. I did get everything cut out. I have my little flower pieces. I did everything um, pretty much in advance, so I won't keep you guys too long. I'll put this aside because this is for the inside. Okay, now look at that. I didn't score. Let me just quick score this since I didn't score it. It is actually um, you're very welcome. Hey Margaret, how are you? I'm so glad to see you here. I've missed you. And I hope you're feeling better. I talked to Kareen yesterday. And she was telling me that you had, I guess, gone to the doctor yesterday. I hope it went well for you. So I have my basic card, um, the basic size card base, five and a half by four and a quarter. And I love my layers. So I'm going to put a layer of basic black down first. <coughs> I'll use glue so I can 
have a second or so to adjust it if I need be. That actually doesn't look too bad. Aww. Well, this is the place. It's always in this group, honey. Okay, so that's, and um, just so you know, if I'm not, if I forget to give you the measurements, I will have the PDF. Sorry, my camera looks like it's crooked. Um, I will have the PDF on the group page tomorrow. Now this one is five and three eighths by four and one eighth. I believe that's what I did. This one was five and three eighths by four and one eighth. This one is five and a quarter by four. And this one is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. Just giving it a eighth of an inch. Now I want to pop this one up. So let me just grab my dimensionals and we're going to pop this up onto the front of the card. Hope everybody had a great week. I actually had to go to the lumber yard. I'm gonna, I don't know how it's going to get done, but our deck needs reboarding. So I had to buy all the supplies to reboard our deck. So, hopefully, I'm going to ask my neighbor that's, if he'll give me a hand doing it. It shouldn't really be too hard. It's really just a matter of taking the boards up and then replacing them. So, we shall see. Wish me luck. <laughs> okay. So, that is the front of the card. So, what I did was cut out two scallop ovals and this one is the biggest of the ovals that I grabbed I think and it's the one that's three and a half and then I grabbed the next one down that is three and a quarter and I actually also pop this up on dimensionals let me just check my messages. Thanks, Peggy. A lot of crazy numbers. Yeah, dude, it's only, only an eighth of an inch from layer to layer. So that's not too bad. And I try to keep it, unless I'm doing something crazy, try to keep it at that eighth of an inch. Okay, so I just popped the black up on dimensionals. And that one I'm going to stamp my sentiment. But before I do that, I had used the die, the sentiment or frame die um, from the Halloween Magic dies. And I cut out a brass foil um, label die. And what I'm, what I did was cut it completely in half. Because I really do want this to go the whole width, uh, length, height of the card. Sorry. And it's really not big enough. And the other one I just found to be a little too big. So, where I have it laid out, try to get my 
edges as even as I can and lining up so it looks like the tag is still in pretty good shape I actually added some glue to my oval on both sides just so I could line this up and then lift it up and then just adjust it if I need to just to make sure oops just to make sure these edges here look pretty even and then you can turn it over and see but it looks actually it looks like it's pretty even <coughs> hi Marnie how are you where is Hervey Bay I never realized you were in Hervey Bay I know it's it's probably you're in Australia I think right so it must be morning by you seven to seven what is it about eight o'clock eight a.m. okay so with that done again just checking my card to make sure what I did I'm also gonna pop this up so this would be one of those cards that you would have to pay extra postage on because it is beyond their quarter inch maximum I guess right for regular postage so for me it would probably cost about 70 probably 70 something cents almost 80 cents to send but if you have someone special you want to send it to I just want to it's a little crooked so if I have someone special to send it to then I don't really mind the postage okay and we can see these are a little popped up let me just I have a couple extra ones here I'm just gonna grab this dimensional grab my little pokey tool I'm just going to stick a dimensional under here so it's not sticking up. Just right here. Then we'll grab another one. Oh, wow. A s yep. Oh, it's 9 a.m. in Queensland. Okay. Wow, a sand island. That must be incredible. Okay, so then that is our little label. So now we're going to take our next smallest oval, and this is in very vanilla. And I should have said, this is um, pumpkin pie with the basic black. I just thought we'd go with some traditional... Halloween colors since I really didn't all week other than black you know I know um, the pattern paper they have Cajun craze as um, their coordinating color and believe it or not I had no Cajun craze paper in my stock so that's why I went the uh, pumpkin pie but I am going to use the Cajun craze for my sentiment and I'm just going to stamp it first to see how straight I have this on my not bad and then what I did was kept this towards the right and I'm going to stand up because I want to overlap the flower okay that actually is a pretty paper color okay so we we'll just give that a minute and I actually glued this 
this way again it'll give me a couple seconds to be able to move it around and make sure it's centered as you can see and that looks good okay so let's get to our flowers now for the flowers from the um what one is it the poinsettia petals the dies i actually did not use the large one i used the medium petals and then the small for the uh, individual and then the little tiny poinsettia flower I'm using for the third layer so that's what I did for those and it comes with um, as you can see the one die is an embosser it embosses the veins and to be honest, I have to say, you can tell that some of them didn't emboss well. I have not yet. Yeah, this is a great set, Peggy. Um, I have not switched to my new cut and emboss machine. It's still sitting here in the wrapper. I've been using my old Big Shot because it's been here for so long. I just don't have the heart to put it aside so I'm still using my old one even though I have a new one sitting here but one embosses and one cuts so this is a really nice set I can see I'll be using this again I keep it out because I've used it a few times and I'm in the process of um, doing my video for the for Marion poinsettia and I just I have to figure out how to edit it so that's in the works but what I did was I took each of my flowers we'll get back to these and all I did was curl each petal with my bone folder you know curling it up and then I'm taking the pokey tool I don't even know if that's what the name of it is and then on a mat of some sort push it down in the middle and that gives you a nice dimensional flower no oh, thanks Marnie <laughs> and then we're just going to do this with every layer and as we're doing this, I think I'm going to stick a little bit of glue in here so it sets a little bit so it doesn't take so much time to dry. But we're just going to curl those petals and then we're going to do it again. And I'm just going to put a little glue in the center of this one too. And then we're just going to offset the petals just a little bit and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the little layer just curl those up a little bit and oops punch it down and then we're just going to stick this right in the middle and there's that first flower and we'll just continue on with the smaller ones same thing we're just gonna I guess I could have done these ahead of time but so we're just going to curl up these little petals and these will be little two layer flowers just for little accents and 
And again, just poke them down. And we're going to layer these up. I am going to put a little pearl in the middle, but we'll wait until the glue sets really well because if the glue's not set, they have a tendency to slip and slide. So, thanks, Marnie. Yeah. Oh, a 3D frame sampler. I haven't seen that yet. Have anything planned special today, Marnie? Okay, so there are our flowers. Now, ahead of time, I dyed the ribbon so it would be dry because I was full of ink today. Um... But I believe, if I'm not mistaken, let me just check, so that's not the right one. I believe this was the Magnolia, um, is this to the Magnolia bundle? Let me just check, I know I have it here somewhere. Nope, I don't. And I don't have my ca um, catalog in here. But it's the white linen um, ribbon. And all I did was take a makeup brush with the Cajun Craze and just brushed the color on. I was going to do it in um, the pumpkin pie, but I just like this color give a little bit of contrast of color and before we put these flowers on we'll give them a couple minutes we're just going to quick tie a bow you're going to get some creating in awesome oh and a pedicure oh my goodness i haven't had my nails done since before COVID started. Same thing with my hair. I haven't had my hair cut since before COVID and it was short. Uh, it's the link. I'll have to put the link, Marnie, but it's the white linen. It comes in a bundle and I have to be honest with you. I am not 100% sure what bundle it is. I thought it was the Magnolia, but it's not. But it is from a set. So I'll have to put, if anybody knows where, um, what it is, could you please type it in? But I don't even have my... Um, <laughs> my catalog's not even in this room tonight. I had it inside. I was going through for looking at, instead of all the real popular stamp sets and bundles, I was looking to see what they had, what we have available that's hidden. Those stamp sets that people look over because it's just a stamp set. So that's what I was doing today after I got done with everything I needed to do. Okay, so now that this is pretty dry, I'm just going to put some glue on the back. And we're going to put this on the card. And I'm going to do it so... Each petal is at the top and at the bottom. And just let that stay in place there for a second. I'm actually going to just add some glue to these. The leaf set. Yes, Forever Fern. That is, it's not the burlap one. 
forever greenery see it isn't that's the it isn't that one i'm hoping that it's still available in the catalog now that i'm looking at it it has nothing written on it so it has to be from a bundle M, do you have your catalog could you um take a look at the ribbon page and see if the white linen is still in the catalog i probably grab something that's not available anymore I'm, I'm, I usually do things like that. I thought I had everything cleared out, but I noticed I did forget a few things. Okay, I'm just tucking one of the petals under just so I can get these so they're pretty well even top to bottom. Not perfect, but that's okay. But you just want to make sure they're sticking. And we'll let that set. Then I am just going to grab one of my famous paper pumpkin dots. And we're going to add this ribbon right underneath this petal here. Just so it's tucked under a little bit. Fluff it. And then we're just going to cut off these ends. Just like that. <coughs> you probably... Hi, Laura. Flowers for every season. There you go. That's it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I thought of that too after I said it. It's probably not an even unpacked yet, right? Thanks, Laura. That's exactly where it's from. The flowers for ev um, flowers for every s season. Okay, so let's just grab our pearls so we can go on to the center of this card. And all I did was take a pearl and put it in the center of each of the flowers. Just want to make sure that's sticking. Once that dries, I'll poof the flowers up a little bit. Okay, now for the inside of the card. What did I do? Um, let me just check to see if it's right here. And it's part in my arm, and it's not. Let me just see here. I thought I cut it out, but I didn't. So you're just going to have to give me a second. Three and a half. By four. Just give me a second. I want to cut another one of these. I thought I cut one. I, mean, I probably did and it disappeared. I find everything after the fact. Okay. There we go. So what I did for the inside of the card, again, I took the larger of the label dies and die cut it in the brass. Now this is about two and a half inches. So we want it to be cut in a half at about one and a quarter. And I just cut this completely in half. Just like this. We're just going to open the card and we're going to glue these to the inside of the card. I 
and what I did was made sure that the little corners are touching the edge and that it's touching the edge at the bottom of the card. And then I knew that it was in there. <laughs> then you know that it's um, even on the inside of the card. And then we're going to just do the same thing with the other side. Again, making sure the little corners are touching and it's touching at the bottom. That's why you want to use glue for this because it gives you a few seconds to move it around. And then I cut out a piece and you don't really have to, you, you could, I could have just cut little pieces, but that's okay. We're just going to fill in this space. Like I said, it's mostly because I didn't like the way this cut off. So by adding this and centering it, it doesn't look so harsh. And then I have a layer of black and a layer of very vanilla. And I wanted to match these corners. So I took, and this is not even stamping up, so let's grab this one. This is the three quarter inch. All I did was cut each of my corners off. Just like that. Same thing with the black. Now, of course, it's not going to be perfect. Something on this desk is making noise. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but at least the corners will all match. And then for this piece, I'm just going to grab my scratch paper and the pretty little bats and all I did was take the Cajun craze and I am just going to add color to the smaller bat just want to make sure I get this corner just like that I'm just going to wipe off this edge so it doesn't mess up my paper. And all I did was using the shape of the bat and just stamp that corner just like that. And then we're just going to glue this down. And then glue the in glue it to the inside. And there you go. That's your first card. And I hope you like it. The colors are different. I mean, it's amazing what a color change will do to the card. Thanks, Marnie. Yeah, I hear that too, Em. Something is rattling on this desk. I'm not sure what it is. Okay, so now we're going to jump to the little treat box. 
and this was pretty easy again I'll have the PDF in the group um, in the morning but this measures five and a uh, five and a quarter by ten and then I scored it at one and one eighth and five and a quarter and we're just gonna fold on all the score lines this is just a quick and easy box And then this one I scored at one, four and a half, five and a half, and then nine. Because these little corners, I want to cut out. So we can distinguish where the handle is. And for the handle, I think I took the little die out. I did. Um, this is from the detailed bands dies and I just lined it up in the center between the two score lines and cut it and then did the same on the other side just to make cute little decorative handles so now that it's scored and folded we're just going to cut out these corners on each side like I said this way it distinguishes where our handle is got a little piece there okay just like that and then we're just going to tab these sections cut that one a little too big but we'll make that the inside and when we glue this we are going to make sure that we glue the tab. Okay, so let's put some glue on the tab. I'm going to do that first because you want to make sure that when you put this little chocolate box inside do the same on this side um, that the little flaps don't catch it and then we're just going to glue this making sure we get glue close to the edges and line it up make sure your top edges are pretty straight and that your both flaps when you put your flaps on that your creases or your opening is in the back so when you look at the front it's a nice crisp edge and then that's your little box and then the Whitman sampler has four little candies in it it fits in there perfectly and then all I did was take a couple glue dots and we're just going to glue dot this closed I put three we I could have even put the ribbon around but I just wanted to make it look like a little treat bag and again 
I colored my ribbon ahead of time. I just want to, I put all my things in a basket tonight so I wouldn't lose everything right in front of my face. You like today's, huh, Margaret? Thank you. I like the traditional Halloween colors, too, I have to admit. I do love the black, but I do love this orange. It's really pretty. Okay, so what I did was get some of this out of the way. All I did was trick or treat. This way we know this is a treat bag. And I am just going to stamp it. This is the Cajun Craze again. And I already did cut out um, a bronze from this little punch. And I cut it in half because I want one for each end. And we're just going to cut out our trick-or-treat. Make sure it's even. And we're just going to glue these little brass pieces just to the ends. Just to add a little something to the end of this label. And it just doesn't look so bare. Make sure it's on there even. Give it a minute or two to dry. Whoops. That's not even. There we go. Okay, I'm going to tie another bow, and again, this is the white linen with the Cajun craze brushed on, because I do not have the blend. I would have blended it with a blend, but I don't have this, that color, and I brushed it on with, uh, it's actually a makeup brush, but a blending brush I use them for. So let's get this ribbon tied. Just like that. We're just going to make sure it's even up those little spots okay now we're ready for the layers and all I did was use the basic black two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths two and a half by three and three quarters and all I did was glue these together Give me a minute to move it around. Oops. I've been working on next week. Next week we're going from Halloween to cute. Oh, look at that. Did I cut it wrong? I did. Holy smokes, I cut it wrong. Hold on. Just, I don't know how I did that. One, two, three. Wow. It is just one of those nights. I 
guess I must have cut it the wrong way. Wow, sorry about that. I thought for sh sure I had it. <laughs> I must have completely measured wrong. Crazy. No matter how prepared I am, I completely fumble each and every time. Never fails. Okay, there we go. So I just put a layer so like we could match the front of the card. And we have our bow. I'm going to grab my paper pumpkin little dots, glue dots. I always have so many left over. I love using them up. And I got, I guess it's, um, the Heroes kit in the mail yesterday. I haven't even opened it yet, haven't had a chance. But I think I was saying I'm working on next week, um, cutesy. And I have a few projects that are pretty intriguing I have to say and I hope you'll like them okay so for this I just used a glue dot but I'm just going to cut one so it doesn't go over the edge and I'm just going to add it on to this both sides yeah, I know. I hate the cutting, too. And it seems like every time... Well, usually I'm in a rush. And I know how much I have to cut. And I usually mess it up once or twice a day, that's for sure. Okay, so that's our little trick-or-treat. And then with the flower, I'm going to grab this crazy little pad back. And we're just going to do the same thing. Not too much because of the foil. Don't want to crush it. And I'm just going to add that glue here right away. And we're just going to add a little bit of glue right here so it starts to set. And it won't take too long for it to take hold and I can add the little pearl just gonna do the same thing let that set whoopsie you don't let it set it comes apart let that set for a minute grab the pearls get some of this stuff out of the way. I don't know about you, but I always have things all over the place. That's why I decided today to put everything in a basket this way. <laughs> and then I still messed up. I had to cut more paper. Never fails. One day, it's going to go so smooth. 
everybody will think something crazy happened. See, the, with the foil, it takes so much longer for some reason for the glue to dry. It's so funny. I guess because it's not porous, it just sits there. I'm just going to stick this pearl on here. And then we're just going to stick this little flower here. And when it dries, I can change the flower up a little bit. And there you go. A little treat box. Quick and easy, especially when you have your things cut properly. And then the two cards with a little bit of a fancy inside. Inside's just as fancy as the outside. And then the original in black. I hope you like them, Peggy, like I said. Yeah, I know, do. It's terrible all over the place. There's, here's the host code for this week. Peggy, don't forget to PM me your address and I can get your prize out in the mail. Um, if everybody would share this video this week, I'd appreciate it. And I'll give away another prize for next week. Hi, Kathy. I didn't see you pop in. I'm sorry. So have a great weekend. I'm going to be working on my, um, as we're looking at poinsettias, on the Fumarian. Hopefully I'll get that posted on my YouTube channel. And I would, hey, Ellen. How are you? So these are tonight's projects. Um, I'll see you during the week. Like I said, look for some cutesy. I'll show you that this week I'm going to be working with some zany zebras. And you'll see what I have in store for you. So have a good... Thanks, Peggy. So have a great weekend. And I will see you next Friday. Thanks for joining me. Have a great night. Bye-bye.